So in the last lesson, we looked at setting up client servers with the HTTP and net modules. And there is also a DNS module, which you'll probably very rarely use, but I thought it was worth just doing a quick tutorial just to show you what you can achieve with the functions that the DNS module provides. So if you don't know what DNS actually is, in a very simple nutshell, it's the conversion or translation of domain names into IP addresses. Because of course, computers don't really understand textual representations of things, they like to work with numbers and binary data. So every domain name on the internet, like facebook.com, google.com, or twitter.com, points to a server or a group of servers that are represented by an IP address. So let's create a new file and see how that works with the DNS module in Node.js. And of course, we'll require the DNS module. And let's call the DNS lookup function. And really, the lookup function takes two arguments, the first being the domain that we want to look up, and the second is a callback or a function that we actually want to run once that lookup is complete. And that function that's run on completion actually takes two arguments as well. The first argument contains an error if one occurs, and the second is the value, in other words, the IP address of the lookup of the domain. So let's just put some code to print that out to the console. So here I've just put in a quick if statement to check if the error has a value, and if so, we'll actually log that out to the console instead, and we'll exit the callback function using the return keyword. And of course, if there's no error, we'll just log value out to the console. So let's have a go at running that now from the terminal. So you can see when we run the program, we're not getting any errors, and we actually get the IP address of the domain name that we entered as the first argument to the lookup function. There is also pretty much an identical function called resolve as well, which if we save and run the file again, you can see it gives us pretty much the same output except we've got two IP addresses in an array that's returned from the function. And that's because the resolve function has actually gone and made a network request to the DNS system to see how many IP addresses are registered with that domain name that we've specified. Whereas the lookup function just uses the computer's internal DNS mechanism first to see if there's an IP address that it can actually return without having to do a network request. So there is a subtle difference between these two functions, but unless you're going to be building an application that relies heavily on checking domain names and DNS settings, then you can probably stick with the resolve function as it'll give you a bit more information about the domain to work with. You can also provide another argument to the resolve function to specify what type of record you want to look up. For example, within the DNS system, you can find out the mail exchange records of a domain. That is, when you send an email to the domain, which are the servers that should handle that email request. So if we modify our function to do that now, and run the program again, you can see I get an array back that has the mail exchange records for that domain. So one final function that we'll look at in the DNS module is the reverse function. So the reverse function works exactly the same as lookup and resolve in that it takes an argument and then has a callback as the second argument. But instead of supplying a domain name, we're actually supplying an IP address. And this function will actually go into the DNS system to find out if there were any reverse DNS records associated with this IP address, which quite often there isn't. But with this IP address, it's actually owned by Google. It's actually the publicly accessible DNS resolver that you can use to use Google for your DNS requests. But that's not massively important here, but they do have a nicely configured reverse DNS record set up, so we can use the reverse function to find out what that is. So let's run the program again. And as you can see in the output, we actually get the textual representation of that IP address within an array. So this could be useful if you want to find out who owns an IP address, or simply to check if it does actually have a reverse record configured. So if a lot of these terms have been confusing with this video, don't worry too much. As I mentioned, the DNS module is rarely used unless you're writing some kind of large scale program that requires knowledge of domains that you're working with. But hopefully this short overview has just given you an idea of what you can achieve with the DNS module should you ever have any need to use it within any of your projects.